Nathan here from the Pop Revolution Show, the show where we make music and show you how it was done, writing, production, and anything else related to the music creation process. But we also put out extras episodes where we cover a range of different subjects and show you various tips and tricks. Today, I'm going to be quickly showing you how I go about post-production for speaking audio like this in this video. Whether you want a podcast, make videos, or start an online radio program, having high quality audio is of the utmost importance. Our ears have been trained to know what good audio sounds like, and we can easily call out bad audio. So I'm going to be showing you how to take your audio and make magic happen in post-production. If you have not yet seen the first video where I talk about microphone selection, I have a link in the description down below, and I'll also have a link at the end of this video for you to take a look at. So I'm gonna show you how I made this. This is the mic that you plug into a smartphone and use your phone as your recording device. Right now, I'm using my iPhone to capture this audio right here, but it supports all smartphones. End up sounding like this. This is the mic that you plug into a smartphone and use your phone as your recording device. Right now, I'm using my iPhone to capture this audio right here, but it supports all smartphones. And I did that in less than four minutes. I did a review on the lapel mic I'm using now and used in this snippet. I'll have a link for that review in the description below. I'm personally using Logic Pro, but you can use really any DAW from Pro Tools down to Audacity. They all have the tools you'll need built into them. First off, the original audio is really not actually that bad, but there's a noticeable difference between the two. There are really two plugins you need to use in this process. EQ and compression. I also use a limiter and DS on my master, but they aren't essential, nor did they really need to go on my master. They could have gone on my channel strip. I want to keep it brief, so though I would love to really teach about EQ and compression and how they work in detail, I'll be giving you the cliff note version. EQ is how I'm going to pretty much get rid of unwanted frequencies. I almost always lean towards subtractive EQ, which means I make cuts rather than boosts. To find offending frequencies, I'll sweep with my EQ with a very narrow Q or frequency width like this. This is the mic that you plug into a smartphone and use your phone as your recording device. Right now, I'm using my iPhone to capture this audio right here, but it supports all smartphones. And what you'll notice is that there are frequencies that freak out more than others and cause really harsh sounds, whether it's a woofiness or screech. These are the places you'll want to make small cuts. I normally make shallow and narrow cuts and adjust as I work depending on how it sounds. I'm using an EQ that has a graphic equalizer representation, but this can be dangerous because you may be tempted to EQ with your eyes rather than your ears. It really doesn't matter how the cuts or shaping looks if it doesn't actually sound better. Fortunately, my audio didn't have too many issues, but EQ is absolutely the first line of defense in terms of getting your quality up. I did boost a bit of low end to give depth and also reduce some high end to get rid of harshness. After just a bit of EQ, this is sounding much better and we haven't even gotten to compression yet. Now, notice that I have a compressor on my channel strip first, then EQ, and then another compressor. I usually will compress the raw audio lightly before EQ and then compress the EQ'd audio after the fact. Compressors are very complex tools and if you're new to audio, it's very difficult to understand how they work and what they do. In short, a compressor has two primary controls, threshold and ratio. What a compressor does does is compress the audio so it has a smaller dynamic range. It will make the louder sections softer by squeezing down, and this will then give the impression that the softer sections are actually louder. It sounds strange, but compression is how you can get volumes higher without clipping. Fortunately, in audio where it's just talking, it's much easier to work with than, say, a lead vocal in a pop tune. The threshold determines at what point the compression will begin, and the ratio determines how hard it will squeeze. The lower the ratio, the less it's going to squeeze. Each compressor looks differently from the next, and many have more controls and some have less, like my V2A, which doesn't have a ratio control at all. It's a fixed ratio. Notice that I'm tweaking as I'm playing the audio back so I can get a real-time idea of what the compressor is doing. I frequently use the metering to help determine how much I want to compress. I like a bit more of a shallow compression that doesn't squeeze too hard, but is definitely noticeable. So my ratio in my first compressor is pretty low at about three to one. In speaking audio, like podcasts or videos like this, the sound of compression is actually very appealing in most circumstances. To my ears, the biggest difference in the original compared to the final is the compression. The EQ helps, but the audio was already pretty good coming in, so it was more about the final touch, boosting some low end to add depth, making a shallow cut to the highs to get rid of some harshness, and a couple small cuts to get rid of the offending frequencies. This is the mic that you plug into a smartphone and use your phone as your recording device. Right now, I'm using my iPhone to capture this audio right here, but it supports all smartphones. 
Now, this all takes a ton of practice to get down super well, and if you are new to audio production, don't get frustrated too easily. It will take time, but EQ and compression really are the go-to tools in making your audio sound amazing. Hopefully this was helpful to get you started. I know I didn't cover everything, but this is really just to get you started. We'd love to hear your questions or comments, so be sure to leave those down below, and of course, we would love to have you as a subscriber to keep up with us. To watch my review on the lapel mic, go right here. To watch our first episode on mic selection, go here, and if you are new to the pop revolution, right here is a great place to start. All of that and more right here on the pop revolution.